This is the value of wrestling, the revolutionary force in wrestling podcasting. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Big Time Rants, episode 89, right here on The Value Wrestling. I'm the Big Time, and I'm going to rant, and you know I will, and I know I can. Anyways, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about Tony Khan and his big bop. We're going to discuss that in in detail, because he, he popped the ratings. He got 800 and, uh, uh, 817,000, I believe was the number, somewhere in that ballpark. And uh, he got a big pop in the ratings. So, ooh, from last week, 725,000, whatever it was last week. Dismal, dismal ratings. This week, he got over a little little over 800,000, but couldn't even break 1 million in any, any of the quarter hour right now. We're going to talk about Will Ospreay, uh, an aerial assassin, worrying about drunken rumors and explaining his side of the story. Make it make sense when he didn't even need to go there in the first place. Why are you accepting something that was said by somebody and taking it on as a uh, as a badge? When he didn't even say your name, you're accepting rumors, you let everybody talk about you and get you worked up, and you're still, still going about it. We're going to discuss that. We're going to discuss the obtuse king of wrestling, the obtuse man. Uh, I'm talking about Sean Ross Saps and... Uh, his recent comments about how if you don't agree with him in some way, you may be a hater or you're weird or you're you're obtuse. Don't be obtuse. He thinks he can use big fancy words. I say he's repugnant. But hey, that's a different story for a different time. Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay went out on Dynamite this past week after the video footage was shown. He came out and said he got five minutes to talk. And he took a shot right at Triple H because he's heard rumors that he can't grind. And then he went for the lowest hanging fruit on Triple H. Saying the only reason he's in the position he's in because he was grinding on the boss's daughter. Which I think is beneath Will Ospreay. I respect Will Ospreay. I think he's an amazing talent. I think he has a great future in the world of professional wrestling. I think he's a once in a lifetime talent. I think he'll be on the Mount Rushmore of many superstars of the future. And he'll make a huge impact. In wrestling across the board wherever he goes and whatever he wants to do now granted will Osprey is uh, has a as a wife or a, a girlfriend or a partner I, I don't know the details I don't really want to get into that um, that wanted to stay in her home country and somebody he's with this is why he took his schedule the way it is and that's perfectly fine Triple H talking about people who don't want to come there and put in the grind for the WWE way of doing things and putting in the effort that is on him. Will Ospreay can interpretate that as much as the people interpretate it. But I think Triple H never said anybody's name. Never took direct shots. He, he threw out a, a, a shot about people who don't want to come in and grind. And that could have been about anybody. That could have been about Mercedes. That could have been about Akata. That could have been about anybody else that we don't know. They weren't signing. That didn't agree to sign with them. Don't know. But if Will Ospreay wants to take it and say he's talking about him, fine. We, we can say that. We'll, we'll, we'll go with this idea that Triple H was taking a shot at Will Ospreay, which I think is a very lighthearted shot of how Triple H sees his business. If you don't want to be here for the grind, I'm glad I didn't get you. You're not going to work here. It's that simple. I don't know why this has to be twisted into. It's a negative thing. He's saying that you 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 don't if you're not here for the grind the way the WWE does it, then I'm glad I don't you know I didn't get you. You're not going to fit into the system. This isn't going to be the place for you. But no, we want to twist it and make it negative. And you want to go after Triple H and say the only reason he is where he is is because he, he was grinding up on his daughter. And I think that's disrespectful because we wouldn't have had the attitude era without Triple H. That's a fact. Triple H was part of D-Generation X and was a part of that what was pushing the envelope that finally broke through and helped on many different levels bring in the era of the attitude era. Triple H was a part of that. Triple H has done many, many other things for this business and made his legacy. He's been able to adapt and change through the eras, through the time with different opponents. He's helped make several amazing stars along the way in professional wrestling, and then went on to head NXT Black and Gold, one of the best times in professional wrestling, 
in recent years is when Black and Gold was under Triple H's umbrella and he was in control and he was raising, you know, he, he, he was putting on an amazing program with some of the best talent in professional wrestling at that time. He was taking some of the best indie talent and bringing them on to NXT and making them household names, names that now that some of those guys are in AEW who are still very much Triple H guys and respect everything he did for the path that he laid out for them to get where they are today. But to distinguish Triple H's legacy based on one little segment and one little comment about him not thinking you want the grind, you want to go out there and basically say, oh, he was grinding on the boss's daughter, so the reason where he got whatever he was. Now, granted, he is married to Stephanie, and yes, we know the story there. We know how she's connected to Redacted Tard. But is it really? Did you really need to go for the old joke? I mean, isn't that the Attitude Era of the early 2000s? Isn't that the joke that Triple H has heard enough about? I mean, he's heard it every time. He's laughed it off. It doesn't phase him, so you shooting him there, which is shooting at the lowest pro possible, makes you look like a giant mark. Looks you like make you just look like a giant fool. Trying to take on something. I mean, why do you assume it's about you, and why does it matter? See, isn't it the guilty the ones that scream out louder? I mean, if the shoe fits, wear it, and you put it on. I think Will Ospreay is amazing. I think Will Ospreay is going to be the greatest talent in professional wrestling in the future. I think he is a big, big name for professional wrestling. Don't tarnish that charisma. Don't let anybody tarnish that charisma. Don't let anybody tarnish that character. Don't let anybody tarnish you. You are going to be one of the greatest professional wrestlers across the board for sure. You have more talent than, than the world is ready to know. My only fear is that you're going to be booked poorly or you're going to be overbooked in AEW until the fan base is just kind of bored. And that sucks. But when you come out and make these comments, you're going to turn some fans off because it's a low-hanging fruit. You're going to lose respect from people because it's a low-hanging fruit. You're attacking Triple H when you don't need to. You're pissed off because he's attacking you on a TV show. Why reciprocate that? Why an eye for an eye? Why does it make anything better? It makes you look like a fool. And especially since you went for the most lowest hanging fruit on the tree. You couldn't have came out. And then you went on Twitter and you put up a beautiful promo that you lit uh, Kenny Omega on fire from New Japan, which was a beautiful, beautiful promo. Mad respect. It was a great promo. Good at it. You you know how to put it over. You sold that shit. It was good. But then above that that caption on X, you put grind A. So it's still infesting your head. You're still stuck on one little comment on a show that does it really mean that much? Does it really have to come down to that? Do you feel that disrespected? Because I feel sorry. If you feel that disrespected, I'm sorry you felt that disrespected. I think you're overanalyzing. I don't think the Triple H was trying to take this as a direct shot that you didn't want to grind because of your personal reasons of why you signed with AEW. You did what you did. It was best for you and your family, and congratulations. I mean, you're doing it. You're in AEW, and we hope you rise and hope you make AEW better. We hope that AEW makes you better, that the two combinations come together and create great in-ring action, create great wrestling, create captivating TV that people are watching. Unfortunately, people aren't watching. We'll talk about more of that later. But um, I think Will Ospreay is a once-in-a-lifetime talent. Him wasting his time worrying about Triple H. His comment. Triple H didn't name anybody. But you escalated it, took a deeper shot. And it just seems like that would be something that was beneath Will Ospreay. Anyways, moving along, Sean Ross Sapp. Sean Ross Sapp did his Dynamite review. Uh, he talked about the footage, how the Young Bucks said, oh, it was the FTR with the catalyst behind this. It was the FTR who set this all up. And that's why we couldn't do all those things. And then he's been on Twitter going, blaming FTR for everything, running a bad joke into the ground. But he's like, if you didn't find it funny, you're a hater. And it, it really is just like, oh, well, who says that? Why is your opinion God? Why is your opinion right? Because I didn't find it entertaining, because I didn't get a check about it, because I thought it was low and cheesy and stupid. Help build a feud for a, 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 a match that should already have its feud, as this is the fourth match in AEW between these two teams. Why can't this team be, why can't this match be built on that legacy of the history? Why can't the Young Bucks be the EVPs 
uh, you know, the heels that are like, we haven't beat this team, but we must beat this team. And we'll do it by any means. Yada, yada, yada. They could have sold this match on the factor of that, but they had to bring in footage. And then you come out and say that people who don't agree with you thinking that moment was funny are haters. And it's kind of harsh. Don't you think? To say that people are haters because they don't agree with you? Yeah, I had to sneeze, drop my earpiece. Great. And I shoot, I just go with it. You know, there's no editing here. There's no fixing it up, at least for right now. So we'll roll with it. Then anyways, we go to the next day. Sean Ross Sapp is on um, Twitter, and he's having issues with people who are saying Triple H never said Will Ospreay's name, which is a fact. This is a fact, sir. Will Ospreay's name never came out of Triple H. Triple H talked about people who want to come here, who don't want to put in the effort and the grind, who don't want to go through the WWE system, which you know as well as I do, you have to go through the system. What do you come out and do? People would say, well, he never said Will Ospreay's name. Instead of saying, yeah, that's true, but very, very apparently, he makes it, you know, a, a, you know, your, your, your interpretation of that seems to be that Triple H made it very apparent that his... His comments were only about one person, that's Will Ospreay, and that is your opinion, that is your take on it, and a lot of other people, yes, they agree with you, they want to follow that suit and stir that pot up, but didn't you call it anybody who defends that, or anybody who says, well, we shouldn't say Will Ospreay, everybody's just assuming, because that's what they're doing, because nobody knows except Triple H who he was thinking about, or who he was talking about, or how many other people in that same idea he was talking about, but you... A lot of other people want to assume that Triple H is talking about Will Ospreay, which stirs the pot and gets stuff going. And then you call it weird, so now you're judging people based on the fact that they don't agree with your same thought pattern. And you tell people they're up to stumpy, up to stumpy dull because we don't agree with you. So you're the god of professional wrestling. You're the god of reporting wrestling. You're the almighty, all-knowing, all-center of the universe in professional wrestling, reporting, journalism, podcasting, commentary, whatever you want to call yourself, whatever title you want to use. So that is who you think you are, that if nobody agrees with you, they are absolutely wrong. This continued idea in society that is damaging everything. Because people are so stuck on their opinions and saying, I'm right, and if you don't agree with me, then you're wrong, and that's the end of the subject. And it's not true. This is not how we should be working as a society. My buddy, on this show, you see us each and every week. Mr. Paulus Clark and I have not always seen eye to eye on many aspects in life, but we still get along because guess what? We understand one another. We respect one another. We will listen to each other's opinion, and we will debate it. I may say, you know what? I don't disagree. This is why I disagree with it. And he'll say, oh, I disagree with you. This is why I disagree with you. And we'll listen to what each other says. We've both grown from that. And we've changed each other's thinking slightly at different times based on conversations because we saw the other viewpoint or we were open to listening to what the other person says. You're just really asinine to say things like, oh, you're weird. Don't be weird because people don't see it your way. People want to say, Triple H didn't say his name. And that's the factual statement. Triple H never said Will Ospreay's name. Period. You can't refute that. He never did. Subjectively and, as, and through assumptions, you said this is who he's talking about. This is what a lot of people has done. And it, granted, a lot of people go, the majority of what people think is probably right. at society, but that doesn't necessarily mean true. Always accepting what everybody else thinks is not the path. Not always right. I think it's a shame that you want to come out here and call people who disagree with you haters. I think it's a shame that you're going to call people weird or obtuse and debate them over how you're right. You know you're right. And they're absolutely wrong. Because you sit in this high, mighty place. And I get it. You have a lot of connections and congratulations. you worked very hard to get where you are. I don't disrespect that. I mean, the fact of the matter is I acknowledge everything you've done. I madly respect everything you did to get where you are. I mean, I'm here trying to get in those same places. Granted, I just don't feel that judging people because they don't agree with your opinion is the right direction to go with it. And people are going to disagree with me, and they put the comments down below. They may say it's all Will Ospreay, Triple H is Will Ospreay. You disagree with how I see it. I disagree with how you see it, and that's perfectly fine. I don't think I have a right to judge or, or say somebody's a hater or somebody's weird or somebody's um, 
a tooth, as you put it. And even when we had shades, you were just like so out of me. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's right there. It's crystal clear. But it's not a fact. When I challenge you to bring facts, you don't ever come back and say anything. The fact of the matter is, he never said Will Ospreay's name. And everything after that, and everybody you want to say Triple H was just talking about, comes an assumption of the facts and not proof, not hardcore facts. You can't prove that. You can only go based on assumption. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, moving along. Sean Rossap. Again, this isn't trying to bury Sean Rossap. I think he's really good at what he does. Uh, he has a lot of great connections. He brings some of the best uh, content to YouTube. You know, I don't have to agree with him. I don't have to agree with the way he goes about things. And that's what I'm saying. I'm sharing my opinion, how I feel about how he's doing that. But this doesn't mean I don't just, doesn't mean I don't respect him as a person. It doesn't mean I don't respect him as a content creator, a commentator, and an analyst in professional wrestling, a, a journalist, whatever titles he may want to say. He has done a lot. And he's a, a big part of this wrestling community. Oh, so, it's the same with a Dave, Dave Meltzer, or Brian Alvarez. There's a lot of names out here who are big in in, in the uh, wrestling world. Have done a lot. They they do a lot of great things. So, but this is one time I disagree, and I'm going to say, yeah, I think you're wrong, uh, Mr. Sapp, and uh, you know, we'll agree to disagree, and that's okay. But I do respect what you have done. I respect where you've gotten. I respect the effort that you've uh, put in and all the hard work you put in to get there. So don't 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 get this all twisted. I'm hating on Sean Ross Sapp because I know how this internet world works. People are going to take it and try to be like, oh, you Katie. It's it's not hate. I just don't agree with his assessment of saying that if basically the interpretation I'm taking, and if he ever wants to clarify, we can sit down. I am open and available to sit down with any other commentator who's interested i know my channel is small that's fine it ain't about necessarily trying to get a whole bunch of people on my view um which is you know it, it'd be great if i could but the aspect of sitting down i would debate a sean ross Sapp, a dave alvar uh, brian alvarez a dave Meltzer, um any any of these other commentators out here uh at jd from ny i debate jim Cornette. um we can i debate ari bischoff whoever i mean there's plenty of people out here i'm not afraid to sit down and debate people in a friendly conversation and talk about professional wrestling debate it and, and, and you know mr sap wants to sit down and get connected more power to you I, I i'd be happy and excited to exchange thoughts ideas and the conversation and maybe you can give me better insight to how you feel or why you feel the way you feel when you say that people are being haters that they don't think it was f that the uh, young bucks comment about ftr being the catalyst behind it all I don't really find it funny. I didn't find the segment funny. Of course, I'm not huge Young Buck fans. And that's why tampon, ha hashtag tampon bucks got started here on the value wrestling. And that's a deep story. But that's enough about that. Let's talk about Tony. Tony Khan again out here bragging that he popped the rating, got a 812,000, I don't really have that number in front of me at the moment. Um, you know, yes, he had an increase, 29, 30% increase in viewership from the previous week. Previous week was way down and really bad, but even though it's a pop in the rating, like he didn't even hit a million, not even over a million people tune in for the show, and it didn't get better as the show continued. See, starting at the 8 o'clock to 8.15 hour, that first quarter hour, when you had Samoa Joe and Swerve Strickland's attack on the ramp in the beginning of the Adam Copeland Penta match with an ad break, it started at 981,000. Then in the middle, uh, at the 8.15 to 8.30 hour, you had 857,000. This is also when the timer came out for the Young Bucks going uh, to be live and sharing the video footage. So a lot of people tune out. They're like, oh, I'll come back in 10 minutes, 20 minutes and watch it. Because you got a bump in the ratings at the 8.30 to 8.45 hour where you had the post-match with Brody King and Julia Hart, Will and Nightingale. You had the moment between Lion Hook, Shibata backstage, Mark Briscoe, King, Eddie Kingston and Copeland with uh, Nightingale and Stokely Hathaway. And then you had the Young Bucks backstage promo and all in security video footage. Yeah, played that at the 8.45 to the 9 o'clock hour. Lost a lot more. He went back down to 822,000. Rolling to the 9.915. Uh, you had a Julie Hart video, Lion Hook, and Shibata versus Shane Taylor Promotions, which dropped him down to 767,000. Between 9.15 and 9.30, we're down to 60, 
765,000. 930 to 945, we went all the way down to 759,000. And by the end of the night, within that last 15 minutes, when you had Samoa Joe taking on Dustin Rhodes with an overrun, got down to 723,000. Part of that is because you didn't really give the time for Joe and Dustin Rhodes to build. You pushed out on Saturday, you capitalized on the story, you had a Samoan versus a Rose, and people were like, nah, it feels too copycat. You popped a rating. What are you talking about? You didn't even have to talk about CM Punk. You just talked about the all-in footage, which had everybody stirred. And controversy creates cash, and Tony got eyes to come watch him, granted, but he didn't get eyes to come watch him and stay. So you can run around and go, oh, we got 815, 812, 817,000, whatever it was. In a ratings, we got a 30% increase over last week's uh, TV ratings. Yay! That's not really a moment to celebrate. This is your second highest rating in this year. 817,000 is your second highest rating in 2024. And we're three, three and a half months in. Oh. AEW, WWE doing millions of views. AEW can't even break a million views. Even on this show, they couldn't draw in a million people at any point. And it went down. After you showed the all-in footage, boom. You, you didn't have much of a change over the last 90 days. We're slightly above the 90 days uh, in the first half. Um, and then by the last quarter, you started to fall under those 90 days. And then by the end of the show, kind of leveled out. You didn't change anything. That's what these ratings are telling me. It's not necessarily the numbers, but you're not keeping people. You look at these ratings and go, no, people are getting bored by the end of the show. Does that mean two hours of wrestling for AEW is too long? Or does that mean there's just not enough interest? That Tony's packing the front end of his show, but not carrying to the end of his show. You brought in viewers, but you didn't get them to stay. So you can pop a rating, you can sell this video footage, you can, you can do this moment, which is basically 15 minutes of two hours. And two hours is what, 120 minutes? So 15 minutes, so you still have another... 105 minutes of airtime, people weren't really interested. And that's what it is. You can pop a brief rating right here. People tune in to start your show to see if you're going to give them the footage right away, realize no, they went away, and then the people that wanted to really see this came back, paid attention to it, and then left. And then more people left. And then more people left. And then more people left. And by the end of the show, everybody had tuned out. Main event world title, AEW world title on the line in an eliminator match. Granted, it was an eliminator match. Let me make that clear between Samoa Joe and Dustin Rhodes, two of the biggest, best names, two of the biggest, best veterans you have in that company. And people just weren't interested in it. Hi. Right. You can give me a pop in the ratings. Don't keep people to stay till the end. And this is what I mean. This is funny. This is what we're talking about. You've got to create interesting storylines. You've got to create flow. You've got to give people that reason who tune in at the beginning of the show, stay all the way through. Not doing that and you're failing. And it's very apparent. And this show is pretty dismal. The opening match was great, but a lot of the filler stuff in between didn't do anything. Bada looked terrible in his loss. And then Jay and Mariah May was Kind of confusing. Uh, uh, Shirakawa, Shirakawa. Nobody knows enough about her. You bring her out. Very confusing. And then the Mercedes Monet interview, which ended in just a weird place that you're just like, okay. Granted, we're going to assume it's the House of Black. But I mean, and in the end, in your first quarter hour, we're in ad break. First, second quarter hour, one ad break. Uh, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. The first seven quarter hours, you had one ad break. In the last quarter hour, in your main event, in your match with Samoa Joe versus Dustin Rhodes, an eliminator match to get a world title shot, that you had given this story, let Dustin Rhodes cut a promo with passion, made this feel somewhat important in the three days, four days, but it failed because you had two ad breaks in. You couldn't figure out where else, where else to pass this other ad break so you weren't taken away from this major title match or this title contender match. That's the other thing. Not keeping people interested, killing your last hour, or last 15 minutes of your show with ad breaks, with an overrun, 
You don't need an overrun. Match ended. Or the show was would have been over. It's just the sort of strict on the post-match stuff. Which isn't leading to anything. So you're not bringing viewers back for the next week. You're not living them on a cliffhanger. If you're going to have an overrun, you need something in that moment that's going to make people go, ooh, and come back next week. But you're not doing that. You're, you're crying out, override. We got override every week on, on X. We got an override. We got an override. It's just a, it's a deceptive fact that AEW Dynamite is going to go over. Why do you keep telling us? What, what, what excites people that know, oh, there's going to be an overrun. There's going to be five extra minutes, ten extra minutes. I have a show that most people are already checking out on. Tony, you could sit here and celebrate a pop in the ratings, but at the end of the day, the ratings show you can't keep people. We'll discuss that more on Sunday when we do the weekly roundup. We will be here Sunday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with the weekly roundup, the Value Wrestling Weekly Roundup, right here on YouTube. Me, Mr. Clark, and Mr. Miguel, she will all be here to discuss that. We are building to a bigger, brighter future. We're really excited about the things that are going to come for us in the future. So we hope you're going to be here for that. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. I hope you took the time to listen to all the way through. I hope you liked the content. I hope you enjoyed what I've had to say. If you liked what I said, drop in the comments. If you disagree with me, drop in the comments. Say what you need to say. Uh, explain what you feel. We're always here to listen. Uh, we don't have to agree. And that's fine. We're not stuck in that type of world. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to say good night. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. We are growing. We are trying to reach that 500 mark and then on to that 1,000 mark. That 1,000 mark, we got a lot of special things that are going to go on when we do the 1,000 celebration. So get ready for that. Help us get to 1,000. It'll be a fun time in this old town tonight. I will see you all on the next one. I'm going to get out of here.